and gentlemen, all right, this video is eight different types of people you'll catch at the playground. I want you to pay very close attention because one of these is you. I know it could be difficult to admit, but like somebody got to be it. Huge thank you to SeatGeek for helping sponsor this video. SeatGeek, of course, is an app that helps making buying tickets easy and a lot more affordable. Listen, man, you're on a tight budget. You're gonna watch the Raptors play. You're thinking to yourself, they're down 0-2, but they're gonna come back because the Raptors always pull through. So you hop on SeatGeek, you type in Raptors or comedy or some sort of music event, whatever the case is, in my case, Boom. It'll sort the tickets in terms of value, so it'll tell you which one is the cheapest and or the best value to get. It'll even give you an indication on the bottom right if they expect the ticket to fluctuate and go down in price so you can wait a little bit, save yourself some money. Every time I go to an event, I'm using the site. Not just because they show me love, but it's just the best one out. You wanna save money, go to events, it's the spot to be. I'ma leave a link in the description. If you use code AGENT, you get $20 off your next purchase. So go out there and support the Raptors, all right? I know, I know it can be tough at times. Y'all need to stop with the Raptor jokes. It's hurting my feelings at this point. Every time they lose, y'all gotta hit me up in the comments, in, in the Twitter mentions, on Instagram. Okay. Link in the description. Again, SeatGeek, use code AGENT. Bless, let's get into the video. All right, the first person we all know. We've seen this one coming from a mile away. We sh we, we've we made videos on this one. This is a meme at this point, is the brown shirt. Meek Mill pulled up the second he got out the bin to a 76ers playoff game, pulled up in a brown shirt, and you know I had to drop the video. Anytime you hop on 2K, before you get a chance to customize your character, you're in a brown shirt with gray sweatpants. So those two things, of course, are associated with being a noob at the game. Do yourself a favor if you're not trash at the game and remove the brown shirt. Unless you got a squad to play with you, I guarantee you, you cannot convince someone to play with you in those in that attire in that clothing That's like if you pulled up to the wreck in real life in a winter jacket Who's running with you? No one's trying to get kicked off the court king of the hill You got to be better man like it costs 500 VC for a t-shirt my guy in fact put on the newspaper t-shirt At least that's free you got a free t-shirt at your disposal if you guys have been around since the launch of 2k There was a glitch where all the custom t-shirts are free and you were smart you copped all the t-shirts. So you have all those free t-shirts. There's no excuse for you still being in this category. It is May the 4th. You kidding me? The second one is probably the most frustrating one to play with and it's the Kobe's. Now, when I mean the Kobe's, I don't mean like they're balling out there. I mean, they think they're Kobe, but really they're playing like Chuck Hayes. Those are the guys on the team that like an 88 overall, 89 overall, you thinking to yourself, yo, I could play with him. He's probably decent. And then you hop in the game and it'd be one possession before you quickly realize you made a mistake. He'd be out there like high post fade, money, pure rim protector, you know? He'd be thinking he's me pulling from half court, air ball. These are the Kobe's I'm talking about. We run across Kobe so much. This is probably the most populated group of all of these groups I'm gonna be talking about. Strive not to be a Kobe. You get a reputation to be a Kobe, and you're not Kobe. You can't have the Kobe mentality with zero skill, you end up losing. You shoot your team out of games enough times, bro, no one's gonna wanna play with you. And they usually have to wait like 20 minutes between every single playground game, because after the first one, everybody in the park takes notice and nobody's trying to play with the guy again. Unless it's a brown shirt. Brown shirts have very little standards, but they'll probably still play with you. In fact, the brown shirt could probably drop off the Kobe's. I'm being so serious. I got, I got something in my heart against the Kobe's, man. Next up is the Dribble Kings, man. You've seen them. These are the guys that there's 24 seconds of the clock. They'll be sure to use up every single second of that clock just so they can pull that ankle breaker. You don't even really have to be talented at dribbling. You can just do as many snatch racks, momentum behind the backs you wanna do. Eventually, an animational trigger, you'll get the ankle breaker, and even if the guy was playing picture perfect defense, you'll get by him. These guys, you can catch a lot on the stage. You can catch them a lot on Pro-Am, running five out offenses. And although it could be exciting at times to see the fun ankle breaker plays, these dribble, like, cut it, cut it out, guys, cut it out. Why y'all just drip? You had you, you you stop it. You're holding the ball too long. It's a problem for everybody on your team because I want to shoot. Like it's it, like I'm open. If you're not gonna pass to me when I'm open, me and you're gonna have some issues. Catch me outside. How about that? See what I'm saying? Of course, for video sake, sometimes it's fun to have a dribble king on your team. But when you run into one on the park and he just thinks he knows best at all times, it's like goddamn. See, that's why nobody wants to play with you, man. Next up is the My Career Grinders. Yo, these guys are notorious for being horrible at the game. They have high overalls, they'll be a 96 overall or a 97 overall. They'll think they're fantastic at the game because they spend a lot of time shooting corner specialists or limitless range or doing teardrops in My Career to grind badges and grind rep. But in reality, you catch them on the park 
and you saw some and you're thinking to yourself, yo, I haven't played this game in a minute. I just came back to the game. How am I beating you? These are the guys you expect to be fantastic and end up being garbage. They spend all their time cooking rookie AI on my career, so they don't know what to do when they come across somebody who's actually decent at the game on the park. Occasionally, you run into a my career grinder who could sauce you on the park. The unfortunate reality is the best way to wrap up and improve and gain overall is to play my career. So sometimes even the best players on the park will have to succumb to playing all kinds of my career if of course they want to chase the 99 overall. There's only been a handful of players I've seen on Twitter and even on the billboard that I know got there playing park. Easiest way to do it is my career, so that's what a lot of people do. These my career grinders, man, they really enjoy 2K18. You got to, because the amount of time it requires to hours and hours of your day, every single day, continue to mind-numbingly play my career just to grind attributes against brain-dead AI, to me, I don't understand how they do it. But shout out to them, bro. They have, they have all kinds of patience, willpower, because to push through the boredom of my career and all the cutscenes, it takes a new level. Next up is the hype beast. These are the guys that have on gold shoes. You'll catch him with the fake backpacks printed onto their t-shirts. You'll catch him with fake belts, all that Gucci Supreme going on. You'll catch these guys changing their haircuts at the barber shop every other day. They got on all kinds of kicks, customized kicks at all, at any given time. They're the kind of guys where when you start into a pro-am game, the first thing they say isn't, yo, what build are you going up against? They say, yeah, them kicks is nice, my guy. They're the kind of guys that insult me for wearing my 2K defaults. They're like, yo, the 2K defaults is nice, man. I'm, I'm never gonna switch up. The hype beasts are all style. I know they have some restrictions on the custom t-shirt creator now because of licensing issues 2K ran into, but before those issues occurred, bro, they were going all out with all kinds of creativity, creating next level sh Honestly, it's kind of cool to see some of the especially creative ones. Of course, we've seen, especially at launch, somebody with an entire suit blacked out. These guys spend so much VC to look fly out the game. Next up is the Brick Stars. I call them that. You know why? Because that's all they do. This is different from the Kobe's because these guys actually play in a competitive environment. You'll run across them. They'll talk. You'll talk it back. Then you get in a game and you find out, yo, these guys are really trash. And for whatever reason, they can't get it into their head. They think they, they got themselves in some sort of inflated level of self-esteem. They're garbage players, but they think they're fantastic even though they're getting mediocre results. These are the guys who run point guard five out on the Pro-Am thinking they're comp, but can't shoot a three ball with the pure point forward. These are the guys that have a big man. All they ever really do is stand under the paint and click square to get easy standing dunks. They abuse all aspects of the game, take advantage of everything they got so that they can prove they're good at the game. But even then, even when they're abusing animations like snatchbacks and blowbys, they're still falling short and always losing games. Of course, the greatest example we can think of off rip is my guy Vin Piz. Vin Piz, of course, the all-star himself. Abusing blowbys and snatchbacks, really that's his entire game plan. But every single time we played him, we won against him and it wasn't even close. Whether we just put a team together or we were just joking around with the garbage lineup, it didn't matter, he lost the games every single time. But if you asked him, he tell you he was fantastic at the game. All right, this category is a special breed, man. A very delusional breed. The next category is the stage tryhards, man. Oh, man. These guys have an ego that will never be checked. I know players that play in esports like CSGO or Tekken 7, incredibly difficult, right? They're fantastic at the game, require so much skill, they're incredibly humble. These stage tryhards, for guys that take advantage and abuse simple animations in a game that doesn't require much skill, you would think they would be more humble. Nah, 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 nah. They'll taunt you, you know, they'll brick a shot, and anytime they lose, they're laced with excuses. But if they win against you, you will never hear the end of it. They live and die in the stage. They're the guys that I go out of my way to troll in the Try Hard series because it is absolutely priceless. When you beat them in a game, they will chuck their controller across the... I'm not making this up. I've done this to people. I'm leaving a link above and in the description if you guys didn't watch the series. 
it is priceless. These guys take the game too seriously. They need to relax a little bit, cool down. These are guys that are so obsessed with their park record, they lose their minds at the thought of losing. They'll go on crazy rage rampages. If you miss one shot on their team, purpose or accident, regardless of whether you were lagging or this happened, yo, they out. And it is a priceless reaction. Mwah. They live and die for their park record. They want to turn to the next guy and say, Yo, my record is 95% win percentage. And then apparently that gets them all kind of clout? That's what, are they doing it for clout? Cause every time I troll these guys, they're like, Yo, everybody's trying to, everybody's trying to expose me. And I'm like, yo, damn. Can you imagine if they had like any sort of attention on YouTube? Their heads would be so big and clouded. Their ego would be so massive. You would mistake them for Kanye. Ah, I had to put that in there. Anyway, it's fun to poke fun at these people. They're a, they're a unique bunch. Last but not least, number eight, man, it's the VIPs. These are the YouTubers, these are the NBA players, these are the 99 overalls, the guys that get an obscene amount of attention. Yo, I'ma tell you off rip, as a guy who makes videos on a game, and then every time I load into a park, people follow me around, it is not that nice. It is actually at times frustrating. Like you'll try and hop on court number four, but everybody sprints there before you because the third guy in your squad is taking forever and now that court is taken. People will beat you to the punch and you'll have to spend longer getting into a game just because people know who you are. That on top of the fact that anytime you're playing or you're on a streak, all kinds of 99 overalls pull up at the thought of exposing you. I did a video last week where me and Suante were trolling the tryhard and we were losing games on the stage purposely. One of the guys that beat us uploaded an exposed video even though he knew we were trolling the whole video. He said, I don't care because this was his shot at exposing me and Suante. And so anytime you lose a game, whether you were messing around, trying a new jump shot, people are gonna tweet at you. I get that all the time. I wish there was a way to turn it off. People ask all the time, agent, why you make so many usernames? Because I don't want people to follow me around. If I change my username consistently, people might be able to tell by my voice, but I could just lie to them and say it's not really me. You know, it's nice to be covert every once in a while. I think it's a cool feeling to be a VIP at first, but I'm telling you, second you get used to it, like a month into it, you're thinking to yourself like, mm, I need to go back to just being me. I do the same thing. When Drake pulled up to the park, what did I do? I hopped on the park, and I tried to expose Drake. Not even for a video or to say I'm the greatest, but just to see how nice Drake really was. And if you guys watched the video, I'll link it down below. He ran away five times in a row when we had next. I understand why, I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes I'll see a guy in the got next and I know for a fact he's recording, has a live commentary running, and he's looking hard to expose me. That's, that's about it, y'all. The eight different, you're one of them. Don't lie to me. In the comments, I want you to leave which one you are. It's okay to be a Kobe, don't worry. It is all right to be a tryhard. But it's, it's not all right to be a brown shirt. There's no reason for that. It's May 4th, guys. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. Yo, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.